Diamonds, this is Marilyn Wright here, and I'd like to welcome you to the Diamond Network blog, where every girl is a diamond and purity is a lifestyle. So today is a very special day because I was supposed to go and speak at Melinda Watt's Purpose Pajama Jam. Back in Cleveland, Ohio. But we have a special situation on our hands because my flight got canceled. And I was very sad about that, that I almost cried, because I really wanted to be there. However, all is not lost. And the word of God says that all things work together for those who love Kim. And so I'm going to be doing a live phone interview with the girls, so you get to see. What we're going to talk about is living a lifestyle of purity. And I know that earlier, Melinda was talking about, you know, purpose and prayer. That ties in, you know, with the statements that I brought up earlier, because, you know, this has to do with us, whether or not, if we're going to compromise who we are, you know, just to feel accepted or just to fit in. And in this case, our goal is to please God, and, and and as you said earlier, Melinda, is to, you know, fulfill our purpose that God has for us. You know, God has a purpose for each and every one of us specifically, and um, we don't have to compromise. And so, first thing, what does living a lifestyle of, of purity mean? Now, I know there are, you know, we can have ideas of what a lifestyle of purity is, you know, it may be, oh, you can't do any wrong or, you know, we may feel like, oh, you can't, you got to dress up like a nun. You know, that may be what some of us think, you know, as far as what it means to live a lifestyle of purity. And even with the friends that we have, we're pressured to compromise. Like you guys had mentioned earlier, you know, when you get around certain people, you feel like you have to change or just to fit in you know, you kind of alter, you know, how you act just so that you won't, you know, stand out from them. But in living this lifestyle of purity, this is all about pleasing God. And there's going to come times where you're going to be challenged to either, you know, compromise who you are, change your standards, or if you're going to stay focused on God and, and do what God wants you to do. So what living a lifestyle of purity means is, Making all of your everyday choices based on the word of God. That means having the word of God as the standard for our lives. So when we go to school, when we go home, everywhere we go, even being at the Purpose Pajama Jam tonight, you know, the decisions we made today, were we going to laugh at this girl or were we going to stay focused on what Melinda was talking about? All of that has to do with a lifestyle of purity because it's dealing with who we are, you know, uh, secretly in our minds. What are we thinking? Were we staying focused? You know, were we really listening in on what she was talking about because it's going to help us in our relationship with God or were we doing our own thing? You know, we put our time in and you guys put your time in, you know, making your way out to the event. But did you really focus in? And so a lifestyle of purity, just to, to sum it up, it means to obey God's word. And that's what Psalms 119 and 9 says. It says, how can a young person live a pure life? It says, by obeying your word. And so this topic has to do with us. Because in life, you know, I know that we all want to be successful. I know that we all want to get ahead in life. We, we, we want to be fulfilled. We want to have friends. You know, we want to feel accepted. And the only way to be truly successful is if we live this lifestyle of purity. And so that's why I, I, I wanted to talk about it. Because I know that we face things where, you know, we may feel like we're less important than someone else. Or we may feel that. They're successful and I'm just a nobody and I don't have a purpose and there's just no hope left for me. Well, that's a story because when you begin to live a lifestyle of purity and that means obeying God's word, 
then you begin to find your purpose and you begin to be successful. And there are so many benefits, which I'm experiencing myself just from living a lifestyle of purity. All right. So we're going to move on. Now, there are three areas that we deal with as people. And there are three areas that compose who we are. So the first one is living a lifestyle of purity secretly. And I mentioned it before. This is asking, who are you when people aren't looking? Who is the person? Who is the Hannah? Who is the Valencia? Who is the Tierra? That who who is that person when people aren't looking? What are your thoughts? And a lifestyle of purity not only goes outwardly, but it's about inwardly. And the Bible says that God judges our hearts. And all hearts have to do with what we think because that's come that's connected to our soul. So Whenever you think about something for a long time, you ever notice how it's like it's on your mind? You may even have a dream about it. I know if I'm thinking about something a lot for a long time, I, I may end up having a, a dream about it or I can't get it out of my mind. And that's because that's a part of our mind, our soul, our in, in our imagination. So that secretly our mind, that's a part of us. And so we have to be careful of the things that we're thinking. And like I mentioned before, you know, are we are we wishing evil on others? Like do we plan or do we wish to see a, another girl another girl another girl fail? Like because she's being more successful, I hate her. You know, that should not be, you know, in our mind living a lifestyle of purity. We should have pure thoughts. And what pure means, it means unmixed. And so you can't have good thoughts and evil thoughts when you're living a lifestyle of purity. There's only one thing and that's and that's what's good. Like you can't be good and bad. You can't be hot or cold. That's what I'm trying to say. And so it has to do with what we're thinking. And so we sh if we shouldn't be thinking evil things then, then that means that, that we should be thinking good things about people. And so it's, it's it starts off in our mind. Okay, and so whatever's in your mind and whatever's in your heart is what's going to show up on the outside, you know, and that brings me to the next area of who we are. Who are we publicly? When we talk to people, who, what person do they see? Do they feel like that? Do they feel like we're someone that they can come to and talk to about a problem or, you know, do they feel like we're friendly? Because it's all about how you treat people as well. God wants us to treat people with love. And in living a lifestyle of purity, it's about how we treat people. You know, it's not just a, a, about, about, the, the, uh, about the sexual purity. It's about how we treat people. Because God is looking at everything. And how we treat people is a part of, you know, our, our choices. We have a choice to treat people good or we have a choice to treat people bad. And, you know, do you act fake and phony towards other people? You know, do you wish them good? Now, when you give someone your word that, okay, like if you promise someone, hey, girl, I'll make sure I get this homework assignment from, for you from the teacher. Or I'll make sure that, you know, I'll get this for you because I know you said you had practice and, you know, and I promised you I would do it and I'm going to do it. Like, can people trust you? And we should be young ladies of integrity. And people are looking at the things that we do, how how we interact with, with them, because that's how they're going to know us. They're going to know, okay, I know what type of person she is. She don't keep her word. You know, she's not trustworthy. So I know I can't go to her about that. And then also... A lifestyle of purity, it deals with how we dress. And when you look at someone and how they dress, you can you can already figure out what type of person they might be. And that's not to say the way you dress determines what, what type of person you are, because that's not true. 
But it does show what type of person that you may be because the simple fact that you made the decision to put that on. And so we should only display that, you know, of wholeness. Like you shouldn't be wearing, you know, tight pants and tight skirts just to impress a boy. Now, I know that we've all done it before. If not, you you may come to a point in life where it may be it may be a time where you do that because I mean we're humans we're young ladies and there there are times when you may be pressured to do that like oh so and so is going to see me today I got to make sure that I put I put a little extra makeup on I got to make sure I wear my shirt a little bit lower today you know because that get their attention and how many of you have been uh how many of you have been in a situation where you've where you've done that? And raise your hand if you have. Just to impress a boy. All right. All right, yes. And so there comes times like that where we feel like we need to dress a certain way just to get someone's attention. But living this lifestyle of purity, we can't compromise who we are even in how we dress. And do know that you can still, you know, look attractive. You can still look cute without, you know, half dressing or without showing your body. And I know that a lot of times, you know, People think, well, that's the only way that they're gonna notice me. And I've noticed and I've noticed when I did, you know, shorten my skirt, you know, he spoke to me today. You know? And we just really have to be careful because that attracts certain people. You know, some of us want to um some some of us older people, I'm not exa exactly sure about you, um uh, about the younger, you know, girls, but there have been times where we think about, okay, well, ooh, I want to marry someone. You know, I, I want to marry a great person. Well, you won't be able to marry someone with their head on straight, you know, with wearing clothes that expose your body. Because when you do, you're going to attract the, those people that like to see that. And they're going to want you for the wrong reason. Do you guys understand what I'm saying?